In the second lecture today, we are now going to discuss on the strategic training and its processes. This part of the lecture session will be held on the concept of strategic training and its processes. In the last lecture, we tried to connect about the, the importance of training for the business objectives. We have tried to see what the business um, strategies are at different kinds of strategies and how the training is very very important aspect of making a strategic choice for the business in terms of making an internal analysis and external analysis finding out where the gap exists and how training and development can help us to reduce the gap so that we become competent enough to make a choice strategic choice of how to solve the problem which is there and reach the objective. So, in this session we are going to discuss on like some of the uh, strategic training processes, uh, strategic training and the processes involved in it. So, whatever we are understand by strategic training is like the generally the word when strategy comes from the you know like war front like the steps that we take to reach the particular objective so here also like whenever we are talking of strategic training it is a form of training that provides employees with the necessary tools and information required to complete their tasks successfully in accordance with the business's strategic planning values and goals. So that definition we need to be very clear about it. Like it provides employees with the necessary tools and techniques. It equips the employees properly so that the tools, techniques and information so that they are able to complete their task properly and which are required. Uh, by the by the business objectives and values so uh, why why the word strategic is important over here is like it it means that it should carefully scrutinize and align the training processes with the objectives and goals of the organization and it is regarded this training is regarded as a part of the system which is designed to create human capital. So, if you are giving any kind of training, training which is not linked with uh, the business objectives or which does not have a, a purpose in mind, like I want to develop, give this training because I want to develop these competencies in the people which are going to serve these purposes of my business and help the employees to contribute in this way. If this framework is not there in mind while we are giving a particular training or designing a training, then maybe we cannot term it as strategic training. So, whenever we can, we are talking of strategic training, this alignment has to be there in mind. So, and the strategy, whenever you're talking of strategy, it is, um, it helps to address whether the training session is planned. It is very important, like whether the training session is planned and systematically administered, provided only when the problem occurs or spontaneously. So, it is generally said that if any organization strategy requires new organizational capability, that is when training becomes strategy. There are some 
preconditions to begin a strategic training. So, there are some preconditions to begin a strategic training. They are the people who cannot perform the required task of the organization at that moment should not be hired because we have to be very goal focused whenever we are talking of strategic training. The people with abilities may be hired and trained to perform even better for the company. Revision of the business plan with the employees and management is important. So, so that it is the best thing for the required tasks. So, if you are going for a business plan and then you are taking some training towards reaching that objective, in the process you face certain maybe questions, problems or hurdles and then you have to like think about whether it is the correct way to reach the uh, a solution whether to, to the problem, then maybe you have to revisit your business plan um, along with employees and management so, so that you can understand like that is the best thing to be done at present. So, what we understand whenever we are talking of strategic training, the feedback, agility, revis revisit of the plan and continuous effort, constantly taking feedback, these are very, very important whenever we are talking of strategic training. Why it is, why strategic training is important? Like the strategy impacts training with a strong influence on determining whether training is planned and systematically administered. It's provided when the problems occur or develop spontaneously as a reaction to what competitors are doing. The importance placed on training compared to other HRM practices such as selection and compensation. So, whenever we are talking of strategic training, so it helps to understand what is the importance of training with respect to the other HR functions or how do we, it gets connected to other HR functions and like whether the training is planned or not. So, these are very important aspects of strategic training. So, what is strategic training and where does it stand and how do you understand the value addition that this training has made towards reaching the business objective that is very important. Whenever we are talking of strategic training, the word measurement will def definitely come, the word evaluation will definitely come because if we are aligning the training program with the goals and aspirations of the employees and the organizations, then we may need to check out also at the end of the day how much alignment was possible, how much value it has added, like who, how much it has contributed. And if you want to do that, evaluation is a must. And in that case, the metrics are very important. So, as you can see in this diagram, the business strategy has an effect on the strategic training and development initiatives taken and those initiatives will lead to certain actual training and development activities done to reach certain of the business objectives and then we have matrices that show the value of the training to reach certain of these business strategy and objectives. Let us see these points in details now. Business strategy, this has been discussed at the start of this week also. However, the process begins with identifying the business strategy is meant to reach the business plan consisting of uh, mission, vision and the goals of the company. So, here as it is a process diagram, it is showing the different processes taken. We have started with the business strategy, but it is also like um, we have to understand 
by studying the business strategy, we come to know about the business plan, which is consisting of the vision, mission, and the goals of the company, and how the organization plans to re like reach that goal. In number two, we found in the diagram the strategic training and development initiatives. Now, strategic training and development initiatives are learning related actions that contribute to the diversity of a learning portfolio. The improvement of customer satisfaction, acceleration of employee learning, and the rate of capturing and sharing knowledge. So, if it is centrally defined, it is well aligned with the purpose of the organization. So then we can understand how to like impart this learning to what mode we do it, whether it is face to face, whether it is e-learning and what are these different modalities, how it is affecting customer satisfaction and which modality is better suited for employee learning and then if people are learning what is the value addition to the knowledge domain, at what pace they are learning, at what rate they are capturing the knowledge and sharing it. So all these things will come under the purview of the strategic training and the development initiatives. Because if you are investing, if the organization is investing in certain resources for the organization, uh, for the employees of the organization, then the organization would also like to verify like whether they are really value addition, whether they are enriching themselves with the like knowledge which is available in the e-learning platforms or maybe freely available over internet, whether the employees are also learning them voluntarily to enrich them and how they are capturing those knowledge and how they are sharing those knowledge, all this needs to then need to be like evaluated, all this needs to be measured. And so that's where the importance of strategic trip, uh, training and development lies. Like it not only facilitates the learning processes through different like technology and medium, etc., it also tries to map out, it also tries to see whether these efforts taken have yielded any value or not. So what are the implications of the strategic training development initiatives are? So the implications of diversity of a learning portfolio are as we as we already discussed, using of technologies such as internet for training, then facilitating informal learning, and then providing more personalized learning opportunities. So these are uh, welcome changes that we may talk of, like in strategic training and development, and also which are pro employees decision, like how in making learning more easy and like which can be accessed from the locality that they are in. They don't need to travel to a central location. And uh, more personalized learning opportunities means I'm developing only that part maybe where I require to train myself. So it brings in a lot of flexibility if we are like talking of like the strategic training and development initiatives and along with that, like how technology is more so very in, uh, involved in the whole process. The strategic training and development initiatives and their implications uh, are like uh, implications to not only the uh, direct uh, people who are the employees, but Mm, implications of training should be extended like who should come under the coverage of this training program is like extended to suppliers, customers and employees. So what kind of things are you getting in? What kind of like 
uh, raw materials you're getting in. So all these are going to ultimately affect your uh, product. Uh, so it is very important like the suppliers also get to know like where to source from, like how the, whether there are any uh, like ethical issues connected or not. So these are important things that needs to be uh, like understood in terms of strategic training and that's why it is not only the employees of the organization who should be getting training on it but the, along with them the suppliers and customers if they also come in the same platform with the employees then only there will be a quite good synchronization amongst the all three players. So strategic training actually involves all these three stakeholders. And of course, providing more learning opportunities to non-managerial employees so that they can grow. They can grow in the system and make oneself capable enough for the next position or the hierarchy. If they're like education background and other things for me or even they may be sent for education courses etc depend, depending on their need their aspirations their competence and maybe other uh, behavioral aspects which make them more fit for the next step like and these are the things which are acting as hurdles which we need to like take care of by sending the person to some like um, learning exposure programs to different so that the person is able to equip oneself with the strength which is required to move up next in the hierarchy. So the offering and learning opportunities to learn non-managerial employees is very very important for maybe the career progression of the employees. So the implications of the strategic training and development initiatives are, so it helps in accelerating the pace of employee learning because it um, helps to identify the needs quickly and provide a high quality learning solution. So uh, employees may not get time to, all of them get equal time to learn or because of the job nature and the situation. So everybody cannot take the off at the same time then the business is not going to run. So they need their own pace to learn and maybe whenever they are comfortable as per time wise so that they are not like uh, developing themselves at the cost of the development and production process of the organization. So whenever we are talking of strategic training and development initiatives, the specific needs, customized needs of employees for whom this training program is being developed needs to be taken care of and accordingly the program needs to be developed for them. So the implication is of course as I told quick identifying the needs and provide a high quality learning solution. So it reduces the time to develop training programs and facilitates facilitating access to learning resources on and as needed basis. So and this helps in like if the learning system is there so it, it it makes the journey of learning for the employees easy because they can learn at their own pace and time they can follow their own routine and then learning really doesn't become a compulsion learning becomes a love it is out of the love for learning it's out of the like desire to know more people may go to this platform to search the knowledge relevant information which enrich them as an individual um, as a 
employee and it helps in personal growth also. So the what are the in implications of these initiatives in like which helps to accelerate the pace of learning are like providing high quality learning solution based on what they are trying to learn and it uh, so if it is there definitely there will be a reduced need for develop uh, reduced time for developing the training programs and and you can like if it is present in a system you can go and access it at any point of time strategic training and development initiatives and implications of improving customer service are like the it is very important like the employees of product and service knowledge so and they have the skills to interact with the customers and the employees should also have the understanding of their roles and decision making authority so these these are very important points in the sense like if the employees do not have the knowledge of the products and services how do they explain those processes to um, the customers to convince them and then uh, behavioral skills of interacting with the employees uh, or the other customers specifically here the other customers are required so that they are able to um, convince them be assertive in their communication also the third point is very important like what decision making authority do do they have to what extent and what are their roles uh, they need to understand these very things very clearly because sometimes there could be some uh, demands from the customers regarding certain concessions or extra benefits now the employee has to understand like whether it is within their reach within their like purview to give give those concessions or extra benefits as demanded by the um, customers so if it is there it is fine uh, if not they should be knowing their uh, limitations also and maybe that that makes the interaction uh, with the customers more easy so that is very important to if we have a decision making authority then to what extent the implications of providing development opportunities and communication with employees are the it 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 should be ensured like the employees have development opportunities it ensures that the employees understand career opportunities and personal growth opportunities like how they are able to grow and if they are growing how it is getting reflected in their career and it ensures that the training and development addresses employees needs in current job as well as at the growth opportunities so it is not only focusing on what is present but also trying to develop what you can do next so that you grow so strategic training and development initiatives for employee um, development is very important from the sense like it is also focusing on the growth need of the employees the implications of capturing and sharing knowledge are so it helps in capturing and sharing information from knowledgeable um, employees organizing and storing information logically this is very important so how the tacit knowledge gets like stored in the organization so that others when required can refer to it can learn from it so to enrich oneself and providing methods to make the information available to the so it acts as a um, manual a guide for others to follow the implications of aligning training and development with the company's direction are 
identifying needed knowledge, skills, abilities or competencies and ensuring that the current training and development programs support the company's strategic needs. So first we have to identify the knowledge, skills and abilities required and then see whether the training program, the how we are doing it as a present are like aligned or focused towards the strategic needs of the organization. So if you are talking of the strategic training and development process, the third point in the diagram if you remember is the training and development activities. So these activities may use web based training, making development planning mandatory, developing websites for knowledge sharing and increasing the amount of customer service training. So web based training, a multimedia method training, so there, there are uh, different ways of uh, training. So these are some of the activities here we have focused on web based activity because uh, it helps in the like e-learning platform helps in uh, very quick, um, quick paced learning, learning at your own pace, learning wherever like whenever you want to learn. So these flexibility are given whenever you're talking of web based training. Uh, so that um, so that is where we are focusing like when you're talking of strategic training and development on the web based training and making development planning mandatory, developing websites for knowledge sharing and increasing the amount of customer service training. So understanding like how the uh, customer is going to behave, how to like talk to them, how to approach them, how to understand their points of view, how to make our points of view towards them. So these kind of training are important as a part of strategic training. So providing training and development activities linked to strategic training and development initiatives like um, these activities include developing initiatives related to the use of following like as we told new technology in training which is more web based training or hybrid models of training. So increasing access to training programs for certain groups of employees. So who will have the access and how frequently they can access it, reducing development time and also like the course module should take less time to be developed because it has to be timely to answer to the problems which are there to answer the environmental demands which are there. So if it will take a very long time to develop those course materials or these training programs then it may be uh, like become out of track obsolete when uh, the and the situation may no, no longer demand the training. So it has to be having a very reduced development time and developing new or expanded course offerings so that you can incorporate the newer findings in it. So the providing training and development activities which are linked to strategic training and development initiatives are is to align training with business strategy which includes customers, products and services, research and development, business system, so continuous learning and results. So the fourth point as you have seen in the diagram as you have told like it is not only the business strategy or the business planning and the strategic training uh, to connect with the business strategy, strategic training initiatives that have been taken like the web based training and all or the what kind of training is required identifying the key competencies and then making the training programs or initiatives and different kinds of uh, training. Uh, that needs to be given but also if you see in the fourth point down which is there if you see the if you remember the diagram that is shown the fourth point over there was the uh, matrices that show the value of training 
that is very important whenever we are talking of strategic training. It is not only aligning your training with the business objectives and claiming that we are adding value, but we have to really prove that it's adding value and if so, how much. So for that, having evaluation, proper matrices to um, measure the training is very important. So it involves learning, performance improvement, reduce customer complaints, reduce turnover and greater employee satisfaction. So this particular training model takes into account the matrices and balance scorecard which is the tools for measuring the impact of training session on the business strategy plan. So what are the steps or how do we collect matrices? The first step, of course, is to identify and collect metrics to show training success. So what you do is a part of that is we under, try to understand training satisfaction with the program, assessing improvement of skills, knowledge and abilities. The second part is the business related outcome could evaluate like what are the changes in customer service, employee satisfaction, product defects and employee turnover. So these are the business related outcomes. So these are the references that we have dealt with in preparing these slides. So in conclusion from this session we could understand that it is given a clear picture on the concept of strategic training and the process of strategic training and development. The learners will learn about this from this lecture and if they can apply it in their field of professional practices, then definitely it is going to uh, do value addition to the organization uh, and to themselves as trainers also because they know how to align the training module, uh, the training with the business goals what kind of training module is to given to whom, who, who can, who are the persons who need to be selected to undergo this kind of training. So these are the knowledge that we get from uh, going through this type of exercises when practiced in the organization. In the next session, we are going to learn in depth more about the different strategic training models which are there. In this session, we have focused on the strategic training processes. In the next session, we, we are going to enrich ourselves with the different kinds of strategic training models which are there. So we can use either of these models or we can use a, a combination of the models as per the needs of the situations and the uh, like business situations or the uh, environmental demands which are there, the type of employees they are there, the kind of training that we need to give. So the next session is a discussion on the different models of strategic training. So enjoy your learning till then. Any questions you have, we will be answering it in the like forum, discussion forum and we hope to clear your doubts in the discussion forum itself. Thank you. Happy learning.